Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our very red cardigan. So we're going to work on making these binds. We're going to work on seaming our body and the sleeves. But let's have a look at our instructions first. So you're going to fold the body and sleeve portion in half by length so that row one is together. With your 60 inch tail from the final row of sleeve, sew both thicknesses of fabric together along the side row of sleeves, then along final row of body and fasten off. Repeat for each body and sleeve. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that everything is lined up. Make sure that your sleeves and your front and back panel are lined up all together. You do not turn this inside out. So you want to keep everything, all of your stitches in the front, your front portion on the outside or the correct portion on the outside. And you're just going to sew along your line. Now, as you can see, I have a bit of extra down here. I just like for my back to be a bit longer. So when I counted out my 10, I went into that 10th stitch instead of the next stitch because I just want the back to be a little bit longer. So I'm just basically lining up my sleeves and the side portion to make sure that everything comes out correct. And we sew this up properly. We don't want to bunch everything together. If your yarn is nice and loose like mine, um, you want to keep everything nice and loose, not too tight, and in the proper um, laid out in the proper way so that you can sew it correct. I'm just adjusting my camera and zooming out a little bit so that we can see here. So I'm lining up those two sides there. You want to make sure everything is even. You can use a stitch marker if you want to. And just keep lining everything up. So now because I have a little bit extra in the back, I'm going to have to sew at a certain point and not all the way at the bottom. But if you have your panels even, just start all the way at the bottom at that first single crochet. So let's go ahead and get started with sewing in these sides here. If you want to, you can put a stitch marker in the crook of the arm right where the sleeve ends and the body begins. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take a stitch marker and go ahead right into that middle area. You can tell because there's a V stitch right there that connects that connects both panels and they're pretty even. If you have all of your stitches correct, it should line up perfectly. So go ahead and put that stitch marker in that place and you'll know that this is the end of the sleeve and the beginning of the body portion of your cardigan. So let's go ahead and begin sewing these together. So make sure that you've pulled enough yarn that you have 40 inches. I probably have more than 40 inches, but I can't really tell. So I just pulled enough so that I don't run out. Now I forgot to uh, pull those 40 inches on the sleeve, but it's not a big deal. I have it right here at the bottom of the panel. So I'm going to start here from the bottom. Again, it's not a big deal. You don't have to start with sleeves. You can start with the bottom. It's okay. So let's go ahead and pull these panels together. And on each side in the beginning, you will have a single crochet on the end of yours. And I have a single crochet on the end of mine as well. I'm at that point. So now I'm going to insert my needle in here. Just remember when you, if yours is full length and you're all the way at the end, you want to start right where that single crochet is, that you end with your single crochet on each panel. So the single crochet for this panel here is right at the tip. It's kind of hard to see because you do have a um, your slip knot here where you bound off and then go right into the other side in that other single crochet on the other side, your other panel, and just pull it right through. I think this stitch is called a whip stitch. I don't know why I keep taking this needle back, but give me a second. I'll be back. 
Okay, so I have my two ends here. I have those single crochets lined up. I'm going to go into the back of this front panel. And then because I can't really see that second, that other single crochet because I tie it off here, I'm just going to put it right into that knot there, which is still a part of the single crochet. I just can't see the loops for the single crochet. So I'm just going to pull it through here. When you're pulling through, don't pull too tight. You want to make sure that you have it on there and that it's secure, but you don't want to pull it too tight so that your work bomb, uh, bunches up. Keep everything nice and loose, of course, especially when you're using a loose yarn like mine. You're using a very light yarn. You want to make sure that it's nice and loose. You're going into the front loop of that first panel of that front panel and then into the back loop of the next panel. Sorry, the front loop of the next panel. My apologies. So just do that all the way across. I am not going to do this whole thing on camera. I just want to make sure that you get the gist of what's going on and how to line up your stitches. So all your chains should be lined up. All of your V stitches should be lined up. You're just going to go into that back post of the front panel and then in the front loop of the back panel. So in the front loop, the back loop of the front panel and the front loop of the back panel and just do that all the way across. So I'm going to keep going making my stitches here. Just making sure, look at that V stitch right there. You know, when you make your stitch and it has like a V on the top of it, you're going to go in the back panel of the front and in the, I mean, sorry, in the back loop of the front and the front loop of the back and just keep doing that all the way across. I think this is called the whip stitch when you're sewing and so this is going to give it that nice edge while keeping that ugly edge on the inside. So I'm going to keep doing this and I will be back. When I get to the arm, I'll be back. Okay, so we are at the crook of the arm right up under that arm where that stitch marker is. And again, just do the same stitches. You can take your stitch marker out now since you're at that point where you know you're at your sleeves. And go ahead and put and begin sewing here. Remember, in the front loop, in the front panel, you're going to go in the back loop. And in the back panel, you're going to go into that front loop. If you want to sew it another way, you can do that. This is not standard. This is not the law. So you can sew it whichever way is more comfortable for you as long as you don't have that seam showing on the outside, that ugly, funny looking uh, part of the seam on the outside. We want everything to be nice and smooth on the outside so that you don't, you can really tell that there's a seam there. You want to try to make the seam as invisible as possible. So I'm going to keep making my way up my sleeves. Just remember, keep everything nice and loose and nice and flimsy. And when I come back, I'll be at the top of that sleeve and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I have my slide, my slide, my sleeve done. And I have my side panel done here. Very nice. Everything is nice and even, just the way I want it, the way it should be, rather. It's not about what I want. It's about what it should be. So just keep doing that. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. I've already done my other panel. As you can see here, that ugly seam is on the inside. If I can get it together here. Okay, so I'm just bringing my panels together because now once we've done that and we've gotten our panels together, we're going to go ahead and put in our pineapple stitch here. And what I learned about this thing here, this pineapple um, strip, is that you don't have to have 31 rows. I realized that as I was going along, 31 rows is too long. I'm adjusting my camera here. Let me go ahead and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my panels here. They're laid out side by side. Uh, I just wanted to show you what it looks like so far, what you should have so far. And right in that middle section is where we're going to put our pineapple strip. 
So make sure that everything is nice and even. Everything's flowing the way that it should. Even that bottom portion, if you decide that you want to have your back a little bit longer than you normally would, go ahead and fix that. Make sure everything is lined up because we're going to start off with that putting in that pineapple stitch. Now, I did make two versions of this. I made one with this Karen yarn, and then I made one with a Red Heart yarn, which is more of a, it's a thicker yarn, it's a worsted weighted yarn. So what I'm going to do is, when I make this panel, when I'm adding in this panel, I'm going to switch over to the worsted weight yarn, because I think it's a little more stiffer, and it'll be a lot easier to follow. So here is our pineapple panel here and I'm just getting this string together because the string is everywhere you have to make a 40 inch tail so that's kind of getting in the way so what I did was I have some stitch markers on the other side that way I know that that's the back of the panel and the outside back panel so you want to make sure that your sides line up that your pineapple panel lines up with both sides of your stitches here both sides of your other panels you want to make sure that pineapple panel lines up nicely here. Now that did say 31 rows, but I didn't need 31 rows. So when I begin, I'm going to start off with a lesser amount of rows than the book asks for. The book at the book asks for 31 rows. You don't need 31 rows depending upon the size of your garment. So as you can see, I'm lining up the bottom portion to the bottom of my cardigan. And then just go all the way up and make sure everything is lined up. Both sides of those triple of those three double crochets that you make on the end of your row. So as you can see, my pineapple panel is a little long for my cardigan. So I'm going to chop off. I'm going to remove some of these um, rows here. Now in the book, it says to end off with row seven. But honestly you really can't <laughs> because depending on how many of those pineapple stitches that you need so I'm just showing you what that looks like this is the sleeve here then then you have your panels on the side this is your left panel here and then you have your pineapple and then your right panel and everything needs to line up so make sure that your front portion of your panel is in the back so that everything will line up properly. So let's go ahead and begin. And as I said, I'm going to switch out these cardigans here. I'm going to grab my worsted weight cardigan so that you can see a little bit better when it comes to putting everything together, putting this pineapple panel on here. And then at the end of the video, I will have a picture of both of the cardigans, the one with the Caron and the one with the red heart. So I'm going to bring in my other project here it's actually pink and white and we're going to go ahead and continue from there okay so i also made a pink and white one as you can see here just a little bit of white and a nice white stripe on the sides here i am zoomed out i will come back in i just wanted you to see what i have going on here so here is our pineapple stitch and this is actually the back of the project because that's where you're going to be sewing your pineapple panel is in the back so make sure that it's all nice and lined up going all the way down to the bottom now if you want to you can put in some stitch markers just so that you can make sure that it stays that everything stays into place so let's go ahead and grab our book and we're going to read the instructions for our um, to seam the pineapple strip so you're going to align, let me hold this right, let me hold this correctly. So you're going to align a pineapple strip onto the body so that the length of the strip is even with about half the length of the row for each. Ensure the right side of the pineapple strip and body are facing the same direction. Use stitch markers to hold in the place evenly. Use your 40 inch, which is the tail that you made um, from when you started off your pineapple strip. Um, use the 40 inch beginning tail from the pineapple strip to sew the left side of the body and fasten off. Use 40 inches um, 
in tail from the pineapple strip to the right to so right side of the body and fasten off. So that's what I have here. I have everything lined up. It's not going exactly to the top of the rows there, but everything is lined up. And again, you can use stitch markers if you want to. And the stitch markers come in handy so that you can know where to sew in your stuff. Now remember, you're not sewing in the front panel. You're only doing the back. So I'm going to go into that first double crochet, which is the chain of the row. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it right here so that I know this is where I want to start my sewing. And then I'm going to grab another stitch marker. I can get it. And put that here. Now, I did not, I'm going to take in chain, but I'm not going to cut off just yet, okay? So, I'm going to go back in with my stitch marker, go into that first double crochet, just like we did on the other side, except it was a uh, chain. And then go right into that first stitch right there, which is a V stitch. It's the bottom of the V stitch. Okay. So now this tail, when you're done with your work, needs to be 40 inches. This is probably not 40 inches. It might be over 40 inches, but I'd rather have more than not enough. So I'm going to pull that through. Tighten that knot down there. Okay. So now we're simply just going to sew, making our way going down. Remember, we're only going into the back panel. I have it detached to the front panel because I want to make sure that everything's okay. But let me attach it to the back panel. Because we're only working in the back panel. We'll go back into that single crochet and go right into the bottom of that V stitch. Just like we did on this side here. Okay. So when I come back, I'm going to be a little closer to our work so that I can go ahead and we can go ahead, I, but we can go ahead and sew these together. I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm back. Now we're going to go ahead and start sewing. Now in the book, this nice lady does not tell us how to sew. So we're just going to assume that we just go into each stitch. So I'm going to go into that first double crochet right where I have the stitch marker and then go right into the same space, space the same space, which is up under that uh, V stitch and go ahead and pull my yarn through. You don't know how to have to sew. You don't know how you don't have you don't have to know how to sew. Um, it's just a simple in and out process, simple whip stitch, I guess, um, that we're gonna use here. So just keep going through each. I'm still in that double crochet, but I'm going over into the over onto the other side. Let me get it unblurry. Okay. So the other side. And just do it however. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you want them to line up properly, but it isn't anything that has to be perfect as long as it's going in properly. So if you want to, you can just bring your yarn over to the side and go right into that next stitch and right over into the next stitch there on the other panel. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure that we get it sewn in all the way and that they are together okay so just move your yarn out of the way find your next space and go ahead in with your needle so i'm going to keep doing that doing this all the way through here until i get all the way down to the bottom
to make sure I'm in this camera here. So you're not lost. So see, there's our pineapple panel. And this is the other panel. Remember, we're only going into the back. So remember to keep that front panel separate. And just go through each step. Each step. With your yarn needle. You can skip some stitches. It's not a big deal. Skip one. Skip two. It's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt it. And you're not going to notice. But if you're extra like me, you're going to try to go through every one of them. Which again, that's your preference. So I'm going to keep doing this and making my way all the way down. And when I come back, I'm going to have both sides sewn together. I'll be back. So this is what we have. Isn't she gorgeous? And all of those beautiful stitches are together. It's a little longer in the back. I'll show you that in a moment. But this is what the front looks like. And I make beaded jewelry, so I added that on today, that pretty necklace on there. Came out really, really good. A lot of hard work, but it was absolutely worth it. I love this color. I'm not really big on orange. It does say a berry red, but it looks more like a burnt umber to me or orangey. Um, but this is really, really nice. It came out really great. Let me step back. I just see the whole thing on my mannequin. And that is what she's looking like. I love it. Let's look at the back. Okay, and this is the back of our cardigan here. We have all of our stitches here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not finish this side here. I put some pins in there because I'm just I'm tired. I have back problems. <laughs> so, my back was starting to hurt. But um, I just wanted to show you what that should look like. All of your pineapples are lined up. Everything is where it's supposed to be. And it is 31 rows. I thought it was a lot less than that. But that's just because I was making mine um, shorter in the back. Or longer in the back. So this is what she looks like in the back. All of our pineapple stitches are lined up. Everything is so nice and even. I just love, love, love this color. The color is just... I, I'm really not one to wear this color, but it is so pretty. I'm definitely going to be wearing this in the fall time. So I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Camp Thai Handmade Crochet. Have a great, great day. Bye-bye.